Hello and welcome to The Debrief. The event is over here in Saint-Tropez and what an exciting weekend it was. Will the Australians here be able to go. block the breeze of the British? Australia turn, Great Britain's foiling faster than the Australians. Can they come alongside if they can get overlapped alongside? The Australians are going to have to keep clear. Here we go, Australia have got to get out of the way. Crucial moment here. It's going to be a protest from Ainsley. Look at him. Oh, there's no drama with the acting skills there from Ainsley. What a moment. Brilliant move. As Sir Ben Ainsley, Hannah Mills, the rest of the crew delivered a masterful performance just when you thought they were out. Emirates GBR comes sailing back and they pass the flying ruse. Give the win to Emirates GBR in Saint Tropez. We saw a new champion in Emirates Great Britain, the first time in a long time for that team breaking the drought. We also saw a big capsize with the USA in practice racing, that big disaster for the New Zealand team with their wing absolutely exploding at the end of racing on day one. We also saw a big collision between Canada and Spain. Wow, we really did see it all. Behind me, the French, they're just packing up after what was a challenging weekend for the home team. But let's go see who we can find. Bonjour. Ça va? Oui, ça va. Canton, cleaning the boat. Saint Tropez events over, but you're here to stay in Europe. Not the weekend the team was looking for, though. Uh, not really, <laughs> but it's high-level sports. You have some high and lows, and you have to manage. And so that's why it's pretty cool to clean the boat, just to recover your your mindset. <laughs> But it, it is a new team, obviously, so you're going through the processes. Are you happy with kind of what you learnt over the weekend? Yeah, actually really happy with the process and, uh, and the new dynamic. Uh, to be honest, for, for this Sunday, it's, uh, much of the errors were, was about me and my stats, my tactics. Uh, yeah, I have to do better for, for Cadix. Well, we'll see you there. Yeah, sure. I made the long walk all the way down to the far end of the tech site, to the Emirates GBR 10. All for nothing. Boats here, team's nowhere to be seen. Look, I get it. It's been a long time between drinks for Emirates GBR, so I have a sneaky suspicion they're already out celebrating. Luckily though, I had to catch up with Ben and Hannah at the press conference a little earlier. Let's check it out. Hannah, the drought is over. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time coming, it feels like. Yeah, it feels really good to win. And it wasn't easy, but you stuck at it. You pushed the Aussies to a mistake at the end and then clinched it right on the line. Yeah, I mean, we knew it was going to be a tough race uh, and that was the mantra was just stay in the race, stay in the race, wait till we get a moment to hopefully uh, hopefully overtake and, and it came. So yeah, we, we took it. Well, Ben, you have done it. It's been a long time between drinks. How does that one feel? Uh, it's great. You know, it was, a, it was a classic final and going up against particularly the Aussies, but also the Spanish who did a great job this season to come back, get through the Aussies and take the win. That was a big moment for the team. Diego, boats out of the water, final time here in Saint Tropez, another great event. People said after Oracle LA event that it was a fluke. Do you buy into that? You've gone back to back, two finals in a row. Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, after being in the podium again, uh, we feel more, more confident, that's, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, um, we feel like we got the most out of the, out of the conditions here and it's amazing for us to get another podium. Uh, fluke or not, I don't know, we will see, but uh, we are super happy for it. You're on the European League now, Toronto, and then go home to Cadiz. How good has it been back in Europe? Uh, it's super nice to be, to be in Europe. Uh, it's very good for us for the jet lag, actually, because we are very uh, arriving to the events on, on Thursday and then starting training on, on Friday with, with jet lag is, is quite hard, and here is super good, so yeah and also being close to, to home with a lot of our people here supporting is super nice. Well, another great event. Let's see how you go for the rest of Europe. All the best. Thank you very much, mate. Just spotted the USA team first out of the water. The Aussies not far behind. If it's one thing I know, Jimmy Spittle, Tom Slingsby, those two do not hang around at the end of an event. So we better go. Jimmy, another glamorous event here in Saint Tropez, but unlike last year, not quite the champagne finish for the team. Yeah, disappointing. I mean, we're in great shape heading into the day. We're just one point off a lead. Unfortunately, we took ourselves out. We went from third to fifth, so didn't sail well. First race, didn't get off the line and, and weren't able to make any passing moves. Second one got off the line real well, great shape. Just picked the wrong side. So yeah, disappointing. And it was just snakes and ladders out there with, with the rankings. Denmark missing out there, you guys were close. It felt like everyone had a shot there. But three events in, three different winners. Does it feel like Sail GP's 
closer than ever? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it, no one really knew how it was going to end up in terms of the, the podium coming into here. And yeah, I think we're not a surprise to see a new team win at a lot of events now. It's, uh, yeah, and the European legs, it, usually it's a little bit more wide open, it seems. And do you feel like the team's close? Yeah, look, I think we've made another good step. I thought like we, we were racing well yesterday and we're just, we're just taking little steps and we've just got to keep building on this. I think we've climbed, climbed up the leaderboard a little bit and we've just got to keep doing that. Well, boat's first out of the water, so I'll let you uh, help derig the boat and enjoy your time in Saint Tropez. Yeah, at least one thing went our way. <laughs> Slingers, it was a tough weekend out there, second place, kind of getting pipped at the post right towards the end, but it's going to be a busy European league coming up. Overall leaders, do you feel like the gap's closing though with uh, three different winners in, in three events? Yeah, I do feel like the gap's closing. I think, uh, I've got to have a look at the stats, but the last seven events, I think there's been seven different winners, something like that. So it's um, it's amazing how close the fleet is. You never know who's going to win. Uh, we're happy, we're in good shape, we're sailing well, uh, but it was quite frustrating to not get that one today. And as, as a team, with this busy time frame going ahead, two events coming up in, in four weeks time, how do you kind of approach that? Uh, yeah, look, honestly, we, we generally as a team, Australia, we struggle in these light European events, but we've sailed really well this event, and so that's going to give us a lot of confidence. But yeah, it's a busy schedule now. These European events are nice and close together, so um, we've got to debrief this one, figure out what we could have done better, how we could have got the win, and try to do it at the next one in Toronto. Well, I'll leave you to it. Well done, second place. Okay, cheers, thank you. It was an extremely tough weekend for the Canadian team. That big incident against the Spanish there, that's going to be a talking point for weeks to come. They're busy at the moment packing down the boats, but I caught up with Phil Robertson earlier, and here's what he had to say about that dramatic moment. Yeah, obviously it's going to cost it costs quite a lot when you lose eight points. Um, it's only five races, so it's pretty hard to catch up on that. Um, but yeah, still extremely disappointed in the call. I think it's still heavily weighted in the wrong way and um, yeah disappointed with that outcome but hey it is what it is they've ruled it they've called it that way and hopefully we see some consistency which is often quite hard to see in this team. We had the meeting this morning obviously didn't go your way will you be following up after that? Yeah I think so I think I'm quite keen to see there's some other pretty strong opinions out there in our favour as well and yeah I think it's got to be reviewed you know any call like that which is so big and so affecting on a team's overall performance and season performance as well. I think it's got to be reviewed and really scrutinised as well and make sure that you know the umpiring team is making the right calls. It's obviously a double whammy, not just the event points as well, but the season points, where's that standing? Yeah, look, it's a long season, so you know, losing points overall in the season is not what you want to be doing, but yeah, it is what it is and we've got to move on and you know, thankfully we've got two weeks before we race again where we can turn it around. Phil, if anyone's going to be bouncing back, mate, it's you. <laughs> Come on. That is a wrap on an exciting weekend in Saint-Tropez and also on our debrief. As always, thank you so much for following along. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. A lot of comments this weekend and why not? What a big weekend it was. So much to unpack. We'll only have a short break though. Just two weeks time, we'll be hitting Italy for the Rockwell Italy Sale Grand Prix in Taranto and we'll see you there. Taranto, here we go.